Hey, good morning you guys. This morning, it's been quite a while since I've done a video, so this morning I'm going to do something a little bit different for you guys. Typically, I'll draw just a warm-up uh, character face or something like that, but this morning I'm going to go subject-specific and movie-specific. I'm going to do uh, a character from uh, a movie uh, called Treasure Planet, so hopefully you guys will enjoy. I'm going to be doing Captain Emilia. Okay, so, um, Captain Amelia from Treasure Planet. I'm not really that familiar. I've watched Treasure Planet. I watched it once, and I didn't get through the whole movie, unfortunately, because at the time, whenever I went to see it in the theater, um, we had our young daughter with us. I, I think she was uh, either one and a half or two years old. And whenever one of the scary characters uh, came on, she got really frightened, and we just decided, you know, it's time to leave, and, you know, unfortunately, I didn't go back and watch it. It's probably good that, you know, I, I, I didn't, because I didn't have any really preconceived ideas of exactly what the movie's about. Um, it's, you know, obviously, uh, you know, Treasure Island, uh, that whole thing. So, um, what I'm doing right now is I'm going to do Captain Amelia. Captain Amelia, uh, as far as I know, was the, you know, was the captain of the ship. So I'm not going to go too far into the story because I don't want to embarrass myself. Um, and, uh, yeah, so what we're doing right now is I'm just, I'm form blocking. So form blocking, um, basically, you know, I think of lines and motion, uh, and already I've messed up. Talking to you, I've messed up. <clears throat> so let's go back here. All right. So let's draw her a little bit bigger because I don't, I don't want to draw her because her legs are uh, disproportionate to her body. So let's do this. I'm not going to talk too much here. I don't want to mess up my drawing. I'm actually doing this for a buddy of mine that uh, really helped us out um, recently when we were uh, moving some furniture and stuff. And you know, a lot of times, um, in lieu of payment, what I'll do is I'll ask, you know, what's your favorite drawing? What's your favorite movie? And uh, this person actually said he wanted a drawing from Treasure Planet. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do a Treasure Planet. Kind of kill two birds with one stone. Do a video. <clears throat> okay. Not really getting too much into the details just yet. I'm blocking in, um, you know, the shapes, the basic shapes, just like you guys know I like to do. Okay, let's go back here, let's have that come around, chin comes up, here's the ear, and so instead of making it, because she's got a pointed ear, instead of making it real detailed and stuff, I'm just going to basically draw a circle to block in that particular area, right, because I'm going to basically go back. I keep saying basically, I'm sorry. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to uh, start refining uh, the drawing. A lot of times, you know, I was thinking about this the other day in terms of teaching and how you teach somebody to see different because basically, and I did it again, so drawing in general is learning how to see and translate what you see into a two-dimensional image on the paper. Um, and I kept thinking, you know, what, what is the easiest way to do that? Uh, it's not easy. You know, doing this whole drawing thing is challenging. And, you know, making it easy is not something that I think I can do. Because it's not, it's not easy. Let's draw this nose. So you guys see that I have put these uh, lines, base, I was gonna say basically again, I put these lines on 
my drawing to help me understand form a little bit better. Whenever I start understanding form a little bit better, it really helps me as an artist gain a better understanding of that shape in its environment. Okay, so that, that chin kind of juts out just a little bit from the neck, just a little bit. Then it comes around, and then it comes up, and then this line goes up and over to the top of the ear. There we go. There's the ear. Awesome. So, you guys know that I have quite a few uh, computers at my disposal just because of the nature of my business. It doesn't make much sense for me to have just one machine because if one goes out, I need to be able to work on other machines so I don't have any downtime. And I noticed that one of my machines, my HPC book, was just not getting used. You know, I'd use my other machines, you know, for sketch work, and I use my iPad and, and whatnot. So uh, I put my HPZ book up on eBay for sale. Now that computer was not cheap. It's about $3,400 brand new. <clears throat> and, you know, I look at what they were selling for uh, in the market because I don't want to price it to where it's unsellable, right, if that makes sense. You never want to overprice something so much. But then again, I didn't want to lose a lot of money. See, this goes way out here. I didn't want to lose a lot of money on the device because it's not that old and I barely used it. And, you know, I put a reasonable price on it. And then I looked at some of the other, one of the other guys that was selling the exact same device. And I don't know if it's the market, <clears throat> but he sold it for like $850, which is an incredible deal if you're able to get that machine for $850. Um, so, that being said, I'm trying to kind of evaluate whether or not I just want to hold on to it. <laughs> because I, I can't afford to buy another machine for that, you know, that kind of money. $850 is not going to get you anything. Not even used. I mean, it's... it's course if that machine is going for $850 maybe I should pick up another one <laughs> just kidding just kidding my wife is watching just kidding so have that hair come out comes down good now for eyes okay her eyes are big golly her eyes are huge that's Disney for you Okay, she's kind of got like a cat appearance. Of course, I don't want to embarrass myself and not know what race of creature she is. Well, she's cool looking. I mean, really cool looking. Awesome, in fact. Okay, this goes... I think I worked with uh, a guy that worked on Treasure Planet uh, when I worked at Disney um, in their consumer products division. Interesting note... For those of you who were always interested to know what happened to a lot of the people um, whenever they closed up the studio over there at uh, whenever it used to be Hollywood Studio, not Hollywood Studios, but MGM, Disney actually had a working uh, film studio there doing animation. They did quite a few uh, animated features, you know. Um, this is actually needs to be longer. And I worked with quite a few of the animators um, because they transitioned. I guess Disney offered them a position uh, in the consumer products division, which is really awesome because they transitioned right into it. So I was able to meet quite a few of the animators um, that worked on like Lion King and Lilo and Stitch and some of those other awesome uh, features, and, and one of the guys worked on Treasure Planet. I think his name was, I don't remember his last name. His first name was Jason. <clears throat> okay, here. And of course, uh, for those of you who um, follow uh, Aaron Blaze on CreatureArtTeacher.com, he uh, you know, has got a very great, thriving illustration uh, and teaching um, business now. 
but he worked at the one in Orlando. And uh, the director of whatever the name of that animal movie was. What's the name of that animal movie, Michaela? It's my daughter. She would know. She has a, an incredible memory. Um, what was the name of that? Zootopia. Anyway, that particular guy, uh, Byron Allen, and Byron? Byron, is it Byron Allen? He worked as kind of a tour guide to begin with, and then he was able to get into the studio um, as an animator and go from there. So that was really awesome. I remember going through there um, and watching the animators because that's you know what I wanted to do. I would go there and just to see <clears throat> the animators at work and see what they were working on. Uh, I don't know if anybody else did that. I sure did. Okay. His mouth. His mouth is going to be a challenge. So. This isn't the final of this. I'm, I'm slowly working through, and since I've never done this character before, it is a challenge, of course. Okay, this needs to come down. Okay, this comes up and over. Right on, this is straight. The chin needs to come down and out just slightly. Comes here. And this isn't right. The nose isn't right. Okay, that eye is too big. Okay, so let's do this. And that come here. And that comes here. And that comes down like that. I think the nose is too big. Such as the challenge with drawing characters that are not yours. <laughs> you know, getting them right as a challenge, especially, I mean, this is literally the first time I've drawn this character. I don't know, <clears throat> you know, that muscle memory isn't there for certain places. There we go. Yes, or an elf person or something? I don't know. Okay. Around. Let's go here. And it comes up here. Okay. Let's have this come down. Okay. Her left or right eye is kind of squinched up a little bit more like she's thinking. I've got that coming up right here. And that hat actually comes down lower. Maybe that's what's doing it. It's causing me to proportion-wise figure out, try and figure out where stuff is. Yeah, many a time I traveled to MGM Studios not to go and ride the rides, but to, yeah, there we go but to view <clears throat> what the animators are working on and to go through the tour and to, you know see that whole thing that was fun I remember that okay all right here all right here we go 
Got that big earring that comes around. Again, I'm just going to draw a circle in. And then I'm going to have, she's got two other earrings right here. And I'm, I'm literally just drawing in some of the basic shapes. Here. And I like to do this too. I like to draw through to find out where the other part of that hat is going to lie. Okay. <clears throat> okay, this mouth is wrong. Let's go back as the angle it's angled down. And then it curves here and then it goes up. go and it's kind of open. She's got a little bit open. Let me show her a pencil. No, those are my glasses. I can't see without my glasses. I remember my dad when I was younger. And one of the things he said, I always was like, I was like, yeah, whatever, old man. He's like, whenever you get older, you're probably going to have problems with your eyeballs. And I'm like, whatever, old man, I'm invincible. Come on, bro. I'm invincible. You know what? He was right. Only now do I realize... Do I realize how wise those people are. Those people. <laughs> those old people. Okay, let's go ahead and come back. Her eye is kind of pointed. Alright, these eyebrows are very cool. They're not just, they've got some character to them. So I go back and it's basically, it goes like this. And then it thickens. Alright, so now I'm going to come and I'm going to do her har, her har, this thing comes up like this, because then that hat actually comes out and over, so that hat's wrong. Let's do her hair first and then I'm going to determine, so that hair, needs, oh it's way up higher. So it comes up. Ears too big. Okay, her ear kind of here, and the top of her ear is right there. So it comes up. Yeah, that ear was huge! Okay, it comes up. Sorry I haven't had a video out to you guys recently. I have been just so busy and inundated with specific projects. I'll get I'll get a uh, a request for a project. Like that day needs to be done that day. So anything that I may have had planned for, you know, my personal uh, endeavors. Endeavors. They're gone. So there's the break right there, and it comes out around. So here's the hair. So my apologies for that. You know, it's not easy sometimes because you have to. Oh, it's still too. I gotta make sure and preserve that next silhouette. Okay. Up. Around. Here. And two, what I'll do sometimes, just to get the flow, the rhythm and flow, instead of focusing on the objects, I'll focus on the motion of the object. So looking at this, the hair, you know, maybe she just turned. 
So you'll have this hair come out and it'll have a little bit of weight to it and it'll swing out. Right? And two, this is just a, a really rough sketch. What I'll do is I'll go back <clears throat> and I'll refine and I'll make better. You know, keep checking with uh, with the um, with the reference, making sure that she looks exactly the way she needs to. Correction here, correction there. See, that's what that's what a cleanup, you know, your cleanup guys will do. Your animators will basically animate the motion. needs to come down a little bit more defined just slightly okay have that other earring come out right and I don't want it to interfere too much with the silhouette so it's just going to be just a little bit in there okay so now we'll have the other around and here's the cravat it's like a silk thing that comes from here and they use those in the old timers they used them in the old timers that's the uh, technical term for outfits oh this arm's gonna give me trouble I can feel it I can feel it it's funny how in, in art a lot of times you look at something and you're like oh I can do that and then <laughs> And then you're like, holy criminy, that's hard. You know, if it wasn't hard, everybody would do it. Right? Right? Okay. She's got these. This comes up. See what I'm doing? What I'm doing right now, just so you guys know, I'm avoiding this. <laughs> but in my brain, I'm working out. I'm working out how I'm going to do this particular area. So we'll do this. I'll we'll do this. <clears throat> right, and it goes right here. Here's the break. And here's the hand. <laughs> Just so you know how my brain works. It's like, I'm avoiding it, I'm avoiding it, I'm avoiding it. Oh gosh, I actually have to do it now. Dag on. I've had people comment on my videos, stop talking. And then I have some people, whenever I do stop talking, they're like, I like the videos that talk more. You know what? That's why, in just a second, I'm going to go to time-lapse, so I can stop talking. And you guys can kind of see the process. Okay. I think this hand's going to be too big. Yep, it's too big. Too big. Again, little adjustments here and there. little adjustments All right so let's do this the frills little shoulder frilladoos again remember that technical term the frilladoo Okay, what I'm going to do right now, since I'm starting to lose concentration because I'm thinking about how I'm going to word stuff, I'm going to go ahead and put you guys on time lapse. Hey, hey, hey! So you guys can kind of just enjoy a little bit of fun music, and then I'll do a... Uh, whoops, that was a bad line. 
I will um, do a final wrap up at the end to kind of give you an overview. I am going to ink it because <clears throat> this is going to have a little bit of color to it. So maybe whenever I go to the ink process, I'll bring you guys in. Okay. Okay, go back to the cravat. Okay, so, um, time lapse. Okay, so it's time for a little ink action. Gotta find my favorite inking pen. That is not it. Where did you go? Where did you go? Hmm. I typically keep it right here. Oh, there it is. Right in front of me. Uh. I see it's right in front of me. I like these particular pens. Um, one, the ink is waterproof. Uh, also resistant to alcohol, um, you know, all that's important whenever you do stuff like this. So what I like to do is I just run my little plastic eraser <clears throat> over my drawing. I'm not looking to really get rid of the underdrawing because I like that. I like that look. Um, you know, overall. So what I'm going to do, this is, I don't know who it's made by. I get these at Hobby Lobby. Uh, you know, Hobby Lobby is a great resource for artists. And they got a lot of really cool Christmas ornaments too. You know, you know. So I'm not going in and this is very important. Okay, this is one of those times when me as a professional am gonna teach you something. This is an underdrawing. Okay, the underdrawing is there to guide you. It is not there for you to trace. It's very important that you don't trace because as you move through the drawing, okay, your eye um, your eye wants to do certain things, your brain wants to do certain things, and your experience wants to do certain things, but you always have to refer back to the, uh, the basic principles of design. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna, I'm gonna push the drawing a little bit. I'm going to utilize line weights. I'm going to um, make sure that my line is not stale. Stale lines are lines that are traced, and you can see it. You can see the stale lines because what happens is your body and your brain want to take the easiest way out, which would be for me to trace everything that I see. And I'm not going to do that. You know, I'll push 
the drawing a little bit more. I'll thicken the line weights, right? Like right there. Just a little bit of nuance, just a little bit of flair helps give the drawing more. As I try and now, I would not be considered. I would not be what is known as an inker. I am not really an inker, but I know how to ink. <clears throat> if that makes sense, I'm a sketch artist. So, in the realm of animation, in the realm of character design, I like to sketch. I like designing characters. I like going in movement. I like the feel of the pencil on the paper, or you know, the stylus. Um, going back in and finalizing and adjusting and, you know, monotony and all those things. That's not really me. So, <laughs> if you noticed, I'll work, I'll work on a broad swath of uh, areas because my brain and, and, and the way that I think, I get bored. And that's not necessarily a good thing. I remember whenever I was working at the uh, at the studio in Orlando, not Disney, but another studio, I would work on multiple, multiple <clears throat> projects at once. You know, I'd work a little bit on Harry Potter, then I'd work a little bit on Disney, and then I'd work a little bit on uh, Universal Studios, you know, Maybe we had a project uh, going on uh, that just came in that day. Then I'd work on that project. So I was always working on, I say, multiple projects at once. And you're like, wow, you're a multitasker. No, not even a little bit. Not even a little bit. I'm not even a little bit of a multitasker. Not even if I tried. And the reason, I, I guess it's my brain, the way that it's wired. <clears throat> I get bored really fast, so then I switch to another. So it's like compartmentalizing. I work on this project, I stop. I work on this project, I stop. I work on this project, I stop. I know that there have been studies about which sex is better at multitasking. And from my experience, just my experience, has nothing to do with scientific fact. Um, you know, an experience being my wife. She is an incredible multitasker. I mean, she can think and work and do things very quickly, multiple tasks at a time. Whereas me, I'm just like, eh, one at a time. That'll do me fine. So what I'm doing right now is I'm not avoiding areas. I'm just trying to find... It's like finding the best path. I'm trying to find the best path to execute, uh, you know, the inking process. And... You know, thank goodness this ink dries really quick, <clears throat> or else I ended up sticking my hand uh, into the drawing, which I don't, uh, which I have done before. So we're gonna come here, gonna have a nice thick line, and then we're gonna have little, little lashes come up like that. All right? We're gonna have this come up right here. And again, coming in and not tracing. I'm not, I'm not, there we go. I'm trying to find the best path for the drawing that makes the most sense and is on model. There's that phrase again, on model. Here. That nose is need to comes down, needs to come down a little bit. Okay. Here. Interesting thing how just one misplaced line can mess up the entire drawing. Right? Can just completely mess everything up. So that's why whenever I'm doing stuff like this, especially when I'm doing it for somebody, to make sure that I do the best job I can. The best job I can. Okay, so 
I'm gonna go ahead and put you guys on time lapse for the inking process, and then we'll go into color. Okay, so I'm doing just a really quick final wrap up <coughs> of this character. Um, so, uh, yeah, just a really quick wrap up. Um, I don't think I'm gonna go in and do color just because I really like the way <laughs> this I, you know I, I do like color and I think that there is definitely um, you know maybe in the future we'll do another one but just for this one I think that I might I don't know do I do color I don't really have well what time is it 957. I don't know, guys. I don't know. I just don't know. I just don't know. Okay, so I decided I was not going to put color to this. Um, I really like the just the simple quality. I'm going to mess around a little bit with line weights here to kind of push and pull some of the forms forward and backwards, line weights, um, thicker and thinner, uh, depending on where they are placed. So you have two, two items, so they don't look like they're on the same plane. What I'll do is I'll come back, like on the bottom of this hand, I'll come back and I'll just put that a little bit forward, down at the bottom, like so. And if you notice, suddenly it becomes, it's now it's forward. So again, I'll do it over here. You know those overlapping. I don't want to stick my hand in it. Okay, here. And again, right there. This jawline, I want to be pushed a little bit forward. And then this earring right there again pushes it pushes that thicker line pushes that item forward and it gives it some form to really reestablish where things are placed if that makes any sense to you guys hopefully it does yeah I'm messing around again I'm not I don't want to go in and like ink it like ink <laughs> because I'm, a, I'm I'm concerned that I start messing around with it too much, it's going to lose the um, the life, you know, that it has. You can overwork. You ever heard that term, overwork a drawing? And that that happens more often than you think. Uh, even you know, in a professional world, you look at a drawing and you're like, yeah, you ain't making love to it. Don't make love to it. <laughs> Just be done. Yeah, I'm gonna have this one a little bit thicker. Okay. A little bit thicker right here. 
There we go. Okay. And two, whenever you have two, two, um, two forms or two items coming together, especially when you have fabric, you're going to have a, like it'll be thicker on the bottom, like right here. Right there. And then right here it'll be nice and thick because you have two over, you know, two, like this comes out like this and this comes towards you. So this right here would be nice and thick because you have two overlapping elements like so. Okay. I think that's what I'm going to do for you guys today. Again, this was just for a friend. Um, here we go. I actually started drawing the sword in, but it looked a little, you know, questionable. <laughs> um, I'm like, nah, I'm not going to draw that in. No, we're not going to draw that in. Captain Amelia from Treasure Planet. Let's go ahead and sign. Let's hold on. I believe voiced by Emma Thompson. I believe. A little signature and that's it. So thank you guys for watching the channel. Like and subscribe if you like what you see. And as always, go out and draw something fun today. Have a good day.